whoa, whoa, whoa. Cry whoa, whoa, whoa. all the time. Stop, 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 stop. stop. Why? You can't, you can't do this. Don't Why? Do it. Why not? Don't do it. Jeff, you have to remember, that was a Grammy caliber performance last week. But the ladies of America can only handle so much. You have to give them a break. So you think we should just pick the games instead? Let's get it on. Let's get it on. Welcome to the PB Game Time Playbook with Matt Porter and Jeff Greer. Ready? How about instead of angling for a record deal, we just get on with the football? How about six really, really good games this week? Well, there are certainly a couple that could steal the spotlight this week. First up is Seminole Ridge at Palm Beach Gardens. This was a fantastic matchup last year, not once, but twice. Second time being in the playoffs when Palm Beach Gardens got a thrilling win in Loxahatchee. This year, Gardens is the favorite, not the underdog. Seminole Ridge has won three in a row, but I don't think Seminole Ridge has completely scratched the surface on all of its talent. I think they're still probably a week or two away from really getting in a full form. So that's why I like Palm Beach Gardens at home in another good game. 24-17. John I. Leonard is at Palm Beach Central on Friday night. Aside from an outstanding matchup of athletes on both sides, it's also a battle of the two unbeaten teams in District 10 8 John I. Leonard's Adam Johnson is going to give Palm Beach Central's defense fits just like he has pretty much every other team. But Palm Beach Central running back Lloyd Howard has been electric of late. He can take it to the house if given just a little sliver of daylight. I think the Broncos have found their game here, and I'm going to take Palm Beach Central 35-24. Boca travels to Park Vista this week in a do-or-die district game. Park Vista, of course, will be hoping to shore up its running defense after giving up 38 points to rival Palm Beach Central two weeks ago. They had a bye week last week, which should help them prepare for a one-dimensional Boca offense. Hey, I really like Boca running back Cecil Johnson, but I also really like Park Vista's bounce-back potential. This is a team that likes to be in control. They like to manage the clock, grind out a few series, score some points early on, and kind of control this game. I think that's how it's going to go on Thursday night. So I'll take Park Vista and a grinded out win, 20 to 10. American Heritage is at Cardinal Newman, and what a shame it is that star junior Travis Rudolph is out for Cardinal Newman. He's got a broken finger and probably won't be back until the end of the season. With him in, I think maybe, just maybe, they might have a chance against American Heritage, but with Greg Bryant and Marcus Davis in there, it's going to be tough because Heritage can wear teams down, wear them out. Now, if Newman handles its business, it could have another look at Heritage in the playoffs. They've been cruising so far, so this is a good game for the Crusaders to see what they need to improve on. As far as the scoreboard goes, I'll take American Heritage 42-7. All of these other games have playoff implications except for this one, Kings Academy at Pahokee, but don't let that discount how good of a game this actually is. This is officially a toss-up. Kings Academy has really played some tough opponents this year. They got smoked by American Heritage, played a good game against Cardinal Newman, and then lost to Dade Christian last week. Those are three state-ranked teams. Pahokee has shown some signs of that old athleticism that made it a national powerhouse, but it's still probably a couple years away from that. They have been losing big this year. When they do lose, they lose by an average of 40 points a game. Now, I don't think they're going to lose by that much this week, but I do think they're going to have a problem trying to stop Kings Academy's running attack. And that's why I like Kings in a very fun, high-scoring game on the road in the muck, 35-34. Last up is a very intriguing District 13-7A matchup. Atlantic is at Dwyer. Dwyer is the measuring stick for all teams in District 13-7A and most teams in the area. That said, Atlantic should compete here. I like the way that they've been balanced a little bit recently between the run and the pass. Now, that said, Dwyer has been banged up as of late. But look, I think the Pink Panthers could beat most teams in the area with just first and second stringers. Atlantic's going to fight here, but Dwyer just does not get rattled. I'll take the Panthers, especially at home, 38-14. to That's it. We're closing the playbook. For all kinds of little recruiting bits, injury notes, and news, follow us on Twitter. And search for us on Facebook by searching PB Game Time. And make sure you check pbgametime.com throughout the week for all your news, and we've got great photos on Friday night. See you later, everybody. No, no, no. Are we test? Uh, we can do whatever you want. Do you, do you want me to? <laughs> you have a face for Twitter. You have a face that most people can only handle in 140 characters. <laughs> <laughs>